Hi guys, story recaps here. Today I am going to explain a 2021 American crime comedy film based on the character, Cruella de Vil, from Dodie Smith's 1956 novel. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the year 1964, Estella is a little girl who was born with half black and half white hair. She has always had creative enthusiasm and a fiery attitude. Catherine, her mother, observes her and calls her Cruella. Estella is sent to a private school by Catherine, where she swears to behave. The other children, on the other hand, make fun of her because of her hair, and her only friend is a girl named Anita. She also finds S a dog named Buddy. After generating a slew of havoc throughout her tenure at the school, Estella is expelled. Catherine laments their condition and approaches her boss, who is organizing a winter dance at their estate, Hellman Hall. Catherine instructs Estella to stay in the car, but she steps out for a moment to observe the party, Estella and Buddy sneak into the mansion, where Estella, who has always loved fashion, is enthralled by the ball's gowns and dresses. Unfortunately, Buddy escapes, and Estella is caught by a valet called John after chasing him down. Estella escapes him and Buddy is chased by three vicious Dalmatians. Estella dashes outdoors, where Catherine is conversing with Baroness von Hellman, her boss. The Dalmatians run past Estella and pounce on Catherine hard enough to push her over the edge of a cliff to her death, which Estella witnesses. The partygoers go outside to see what happened, with the Baroness lying and claiming that Catherine was trying to accost her for money, Estella runs with Buddy and travels in a garbage truck, Estella arrives at Regent's Park in London, where she had planned to visit with her mother, only to discover that she has lost her jewelry, her mother had given her to hold on to. She falls asleep by the fountain and is discovered by two delinquent brothers, Horace and Jasper Baden. The next morning, along with their dog Wink, they are trying to swipe from the fountain when they meet Estella Jasper determines that she doesn't have a family, and when an officer apprehends them, the three escape together. Estella joins the boys at their hideout, and Jasper advises Horace to keep her around because a female can appear to be an innocent distraction to the folks they aim to rob. Estella dyes her hair to go along with the schemes and be unrecognizable. Ten years later, to support themselves, Estella continues to commit crimes with Horace and Jasper. Estella also continues to work on her fashion ideas. The brothers surprise Estella with a job at the Liberty Department store downtown on her birthday because Jasper had seen her staring at it all the time. She is very grateful to them, Estella begins working at Liberty as a cleaning woman for a rotten boss named Gerald, he never gives Estella the opportunity to express herself and treats her badly. Horace and Jasper bring her lunch, and Horace suspects that the place could be robbed, but Estella is interested in working honestly. Gerald then drags her back in and orders her to clean overnight because the garbage she was carrying out poured onto her when the bag ripped open. She steals a liquor bottle from his office that night and goes to the window display, which Estella finds hideous. Estella wakes up hungover by the window with Horace, Jasper, and other patrons seeing the display, which Estella changed radically to appeal more to her style. Gerald notices Estella and plans to fire her until he finds that the store's owner, the Baroness, is on her way. Estella hides with Horace and Jasper, who proceed to nick Gerald's wallet and grab a few goodies that the Baroness inquires about the window display, which she admires. Gerald accuses Estella of being the culprit and threatens to dismiss her, but she instead instructs her assistant Jeffrey to hand her business card to Estella. Estella runs off with the Badoons in celebration of moving on up. Estella begins to work at the house of Baroness, coming up with dress ideas and designs she immediately realizes that the Baroness is a cold and soulless woman who only criticizes her employees' work and has sociopathic traits, such as cutting the sleeves off Estella's design with a razor and not caring when she accidentally nicks Estella's hand. After work, she stops by a shop operated by a man named Artie who quickly befriends Estella since she likes his fashion sense. She also notices a red dress made by the Baroness in the window Estella proves to the Baroness that she has a sense for fashion throughout her time at work. Estella, on the other hand, changes her mind about the Baroness when she notices that she is wearing her mother's necklace. When she tells Estella that a former employer tried to rob her and then fell off a cliff Estella develops a deep hatred for the Baroness. Estella informs Horace and Jasper of the news, seeing it as an opportunity to pull off a robbery, especially because the Baroness is ready to host a gala soon. Estella plans the theft by memorizing the Baroness' schedule, 
and how the guards work and move about. She knows that she will be recognized if she tries to attend. Horace and Jasper enter the premises under the cover of pest exterminators on the night of the gala, with Wink posing as a rat. Jasper then makes his way to the security cameras as the heist commences. Estella leaves her wig off and retains her natural hair showing up in disguise as Cruella and wearing the Baroness's dress she saw in Artie's shop. Everyone in the room is taken aback, including the usually dismissive Baroness. Anita, a journalist who recognizes Estella from her hair, is also watching and amazed. Before taking a seat with the Baroness, Estella takes down the Baroness's guards. When Horace approaches the safe with the necklace, he finds it empty and Estella sees that the Baroness is wearing it just as the Baroness realizes Cruella is trespassing, Jasper sets off some rats into the party, causing a distraction that allows Estella to snatch the necklace off the Baroness and give it to Buddy, unfortunately. The Baroness's Dalmatians come out, and one of them swallows necklace after. Trying to take it back from Buddy, Estella notices that the Baroness is controlling the dogs with a whistle, which she also used when Catherine died, implying that the Baroness purposefully summoned her dogs to kill Catherine. Estella hotwires a car to get away with the Badoons and their dogs when their truck is towed. Estella stops and cries over the fact that her boss murdered her mother. Estella's Cruella persona is still active the next morning, ordering Horace and Jasper to kidnap the Baroness's dogs, so one of them can pass the necklace. Estella then goes to Anita's office, still dressed as Cruella, and asks her to publicize her personal exploits. Meanwhile, Horace and Jasper come across the Dalmatians when they are being bathed, and they use Wink as bait to entice them out before loading them onto a vehicle. Cruella soon begins to crash many more events held by the Baroness, and with Anita covering it in the paper, Cruella becomes a fashion sensation, completely upstaging and overshadowing the Baroness. She grows more and more agitated, even firing her lawyer Roger for failing to have Cruella arrested, then instructs Estella to come up with a new design for an upcoming spring collection presentation. Estella orders a special material and creates the dress which the Baroness is clearly impressed by although she plans to take credit for it. Estella has Horace and Jasper visit the house of Baroness and cause a commotion in order to make it appear as if Cruella attempted to break in, causing the Baroness to have her gown stored in a top-secret vault. Estella's increasingly arrogant behavior has began to undermine her relationship with Horace and Jasper back at home. When the Baroness opens the vault to exhibit her spring collection, a swarm of moths comes out, having chewed through practically all of the clothes. This is because the material with which Estella made her dress were special cocoons, outside, Horace and Jasper, backed by Artie, put on a real show, during which Artie sings I Wanna Be Your Dog and Cruella appears in a Dalmatian fur outfit, prompting the Baroness to believe Cruella killed her dogs. When Estella returns home, she finds Horace and Jasper tied up, with the Baroness and her henchman having deduced that Cruella is Estella. The henchmen bind Estella to a chair, with the Baroness plotting to frame Horace and Jasper for Cruella's death in a fire. Estella retaliates that she knows the Baroness murdered her mother, but that her remarks indicate that she has also murdered others, even if she doesn't know who Estella is referring to. She leaves Estella, plus Buddy and Wink, to burn, but Estella sees a mysterious figure coming to get her the place burns down, and word spreads that Cruella has died. Estella, Buddy, and Wink all wake up in John's house. He delivers Catherine's necklace and informs her that it has been properly cleaned and that it contains a key to a box, much to Estella's amazement. Estella's birth certificate is contained within the box. John then reveals that the Baroness is Estella's true biological mother although the Baron desired children, the Baroness believed that becoming a mother would compromise her career, so she ordered John to have the baby killed after birth. Instead, he found Catherine and delivered Estella to her so that she could be nurtured correctly. Estella is in disbelief and runs away, stealing a motorcycle from a delivery boy she rides back to Regent's Park where she addresses the space as Catherine while she is in amazement at being lied to about Catherine not being her mother, she still considered her as such, and now intends to accept her new identity as Cruella. Estella gets a truck and busts through the front of the police station, 
then sets Wink inside to get a key to Horace and Jasper's cells, although they break out, they are still mad at Estella for how she treated them after she tells them about the Baroness being her real mother, they go back to John's home, where she says that Horace and Jasper are her families. They then meet to plan a final strategy to depose the Baroness, and Estella subsequently seeks assistance from Artie. Horace comes back with the Baroness's Panther de Vilcar, and Estella likes the sound of the name the Baroness throws another gala, and everyone in attendance wears black wigs in honor of Cruella. Estella pokes the Baroness with a pin, distracting her long enough for her to fetch her dog whistle. She uses it to lead the Dalmatians to the cliff's edge. Horace, Jasper, Artie, and John gather people to start heading outside. Estella gets the Dalmatians to obey her, and then reveals to the Baroness that she is her daughter. The Baroness takes credit for Estella's talent once more and pretends to want to take over the company with her. She approaches Estella with the intention of hugging her, but instead pushes her over the edge. Everyone sees this, as the police approach and the Baroness is powerless to conceal it. Luckily, Estella prepared for this, and she uses a parachute to stop her fall. Cruella enters just as the Baroness is being imprisoned, stunning everyone once more. Estella admits through narration that she left her will to Cruella, because she knew Baroness would try to kill her. Which now leaves her with her mother's fortune. Cruella holds a funeral for Estella, then takes Horace and Jasper plus Buddy, Wink, and the newly adopted Dalmatians back to the estate, together with John and Artie as part of the team, Cruella tells the brothers that she has some big plans in store. Cruella leaves a Dalmatian puppy named Pongo at Roger's home, and another named Perdita at Anita's home. Roger, who is now a songwriter, starts writing Cruella's famous theme song. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.